This is Chippy from umpcportal.com and I've got the UMID MBOOK or M1 here and I just want to go over the 15 most important points about it in a very quick video. So number one, uh, build quality. I can quickly demonstrate that by just opening and closing the device and just generally moving the device around. You can, you can hear that the actual plastics aren't brilliantly put together. So it's not the best quality uh, plastics or build quality. Um, the second point is that it's neither perfect for tabletop nor hand top usage. And I couldn't quickly demonstrate that because there is no touch pointer on this, no mouse pointer. So using the actual touch screen on the device means it flops back. The keyboard is also very small and only allows you to use one finger. Now with hand top use, it's a slightly different story. So I'm facing the keyboard uh, to me now. In fact, let me just demonstrate this by zooming out. So here's the demo. I can, I'm holding the, the keyboard so that it's pointing towards my eyes and comfortable for typing. The screen is actually pointing towards my chest. To actually get the best angle on the screen, you have to lift or tip the device back and you're in a position where it's not so comfortable for typing. So this really isn't the best thumb typing device out there. Point number three is to do with the shift key. There's a sh sh single shift key on this side, which means when you're thumb typing and you want to do something like shift A, you're pressing shift and then you're leaning all the way over to do the A, the S, all, in, on all these keys in this area. There are one or two other strange key layouts as well. For example, the forward slash is behind a function key and the question mark is behind a function shift. So you actually have to press between both of those keys and then hit the M key for the question mark. So there's a strange, some strange features about the keyboard. Point number four is to do with uh, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So we quickly go into standby mode. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth were on. It's very quick to go in and out of standby on this. But what happens is the BIOS actually switches the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off. So when you come out of stand standby, you have to turn the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on. There's also no ability to switch just the Wi-Fi or just the Bluetooth on. Point number five is that there's no uh, direct access to USB or headphone, standard headphone or USB port. So there's a mini USB port here and then a headphone breakout port here or rather a headset breakout port. Three and a half inch port would have been a lot better and it does appear that there's some space to provide um, a headset port on the device. But moving on to the positive things then, this is really one of the smallest, most powerful notebook style and pocketable PCs there is. There is really nothing this small that can go in your pocket that can give you this uh, complete feature set. It's extremely fast to boot, extremely fast to come out of um, uh, standby and extremely f fast to start programs. There's also a very good quality touch screen on it which is really necessary with this small screen. It seems to have got uh, stabilization, cursor stabilization on it and also possible area detection based on um, how your finger moves. It can work out the area that you're pressing and then effectively snap to what you are trying to um, point to. Um, it is certainly noticeable. It seems to be much more accurate than, uh, than for example, the, uh, the Viliv S5 on the touch screen. It's powerful enough for most operations, so for example Skype video works out of the box, the webcam is very good and there's enough processing power here to give you a reasonable Skype video experience. So that's uh, a great advantage, there's also enough power to do basic video editing, a uh, good amount of photo editing and use of fairly heavyweight programs like um, OpenOffice. The battery life is pretty good. We're looking at about four hours on this in use. Um, the only problem is there's no real time indicator on the on the battery. You only see percentage, so there's a possible need of a BIOS upgrade on this, which in fact is a prototype device, I should point out. So hopefully the battery life indicator will be sorted out, but three and a half to four hours real in use 
But if you're, if you're looking to run, for example, Skype with the screen off and the device closed, could give you six hours over Bluetooth tethered to a phone, or in the 3G version, probably four to five hours. Finally, um, no, not finally, penultimately, the uh, device is silent and very cool in operation. There's a tiny bit of warmth that comes off the base of the device, uh, but it's a totally silent device because of the SST and the fanless build. So, I mentioned before that it's not perfect as a thumb typing device, it's not perfect as a tabletop device, but it's usable actually in, in those scenarios. In fact, it's usable in most of scenarios. So this is actually one of the best fallback PCs or backup PCs I've ever, I've ever used. So if your business relies on the web or the internet for operations and if you need to have to guarantee that you can get to um, full quality web experience at any point even though you haven't uh, maybe planned some work this is really a perfect device for supporting um, applications on the web. So all in all it's a great step forward for UMPCs and it's definitely one of the best UMPCs available on the market. Uh, there's obviously some negative points but um, all in all this is really a fantastic uh, UMPC and a great step forward. This is Chippy from UMPC Portal with the UMID MBOK M1 UMPC.